So on uh, our hosting of this conference, an international conference on cross-border and uh, borderless education with a running theme, Building Castles in the Air, the Asian Schools in Iguala. The big question is, is building a castle in the air worth doing? Our castle in the air metaphor may sound like building a school in the cloud is something only as a dream. But indeed, as we all know, it is now the emerging platform for delivering education. Gone are the days when we simply get information from the ground, that is, from traditional classroom-based learning. We have already seeded the cloud with information that can be used for causing precipitation of learning and rate of learning, rate of learning in areas that cannot be reached by traditional classrooms. To areas where education remains a drought that further cause ignorance and poverty. In the cloud, there are a lot of opportunities. Given its potential in a knowledge-based and information-driven society like our modern world, where everyone, particularly our new generation of learners who make use of the internet as if their life depends on it. Given the expansiveness of the cloud, there is a great opportunity that it can be used in furthering educational goals especially in developing countries like the Philippines and Thailand. How can cloud computing help in the noblest human person of all, which is education? The work of human society is not in how much it learns, but how much it knows. For it is knowledge that drives advancement and ultimately human comfort. However, the world of knowledge goes far beyond the limitations of material wealth. It is knowledge that makes man, man. That being said, I believe that cloud-based education has a prominent role to play in the classrooms of tomorrow. I mean, classrooms of today. Let me provide a few examples. Many of our nation's schools suffer from low graduation rates directly attributable to insufficient infrastructure, like having underlying staff, limited classrooms, lack of teachers, inadequate print materials. Cloud computing solutions can solve many of these problems. For support staff, a distributed management system can substantially reduce their load, leveraging efficiencies across the nationwide school network. The problem of small and inadequate classrooms can be solved through virtual classrooms with students attending class in their own homes, in their own computers, with the teacher being present hundreds or even a thousand of miles away. This can also help address the issue of inadequate number of teachers. With computers getting cheaper by the day, this does not seem impossible. And why should the benefit stop only in the first world countries? With cloud-based learning, the whole world can learn from the best. And who says that the best only come from the West? It's high time to show the world we in the East too can. And we can start by pulling our strengths, both the Don Mariano Marcus Memorial State University and Chulalong Court University. On the part the students think how convenient homework assignments will become. The students can work on the cloud, operate with team members, and share knowledge, and be sure that they won't be behind their homework assignments when they go to school. Since they are on the cloud, they can access them anywhere, be it home or school. For uh, uh, from schools, let's move to colleges and universities. Many institutions do not have sufficient hardware or software to give students a complete learning experience. This problem is especially pronounced in the technical fields. 
Simulating those complex weather patterns and running those complicated algorithms will no longer be something that only students at top of institutions like Stanford University and MIT can do. In other words, with cloud-based education, we can democratize education. We can level the playing field. A new concept of e-learning emerges out of it. The e-learning means delivering education service to the user or client anywhere, anytime. E-learning is possible with the help of the internet to spread educational services with minimum expenditure throughout the country due to ease of access through handheld and easily affordable devices. There are many problems that exist in the traditional education system like integration of teaching resources, teaching development, teaching information systems. E-learning is a service in the form of many applications like content management, virtualization, resource management, and communication management. So keeping the pace with the technology, the cloud computing technology shows another silver lining in the delivery of education electronically. Today, we can explore the cloud and reap the benefits of e-learning in a cloud computing environment, especially with the advent of ASEAN integration, where we have many mobile and transnational students who now have varying needs that cannot be addressed by the traditional ground-based system of the past. We would do better good in our respective countries if we can bring education to students who cannot come to us. It is a reality that there are still many sectors in society who cannot come to school for one reason or the other. So this is a good point where we could come up with you know, a system, a cloud-based learning, where we deliver education right at their good steps. A considerable number of countries are already moving in this direction. Today, we can choose to move to that direction of further fostering education in our respective countries in a collaborative mode. For example, we can work out developing some programs that we can offer through cloud-based learning that will address the specific needs. In the cloud, we usher a new era of borderless education in the fastest and most economical way. As institutions of higher learning, we have the responsibility of breaking frontiers in our respective fields and paving the way for the greater good of the global citizens. The challenge to us, being members of the ASEAN and of the global village, is on how we can mine our strengths as universities to realize our dream of putting up a borderless university, or something like a school in the cloud, where the sky and our imagination are the limits in teaching and learning. So, shall we see the clouds for learning now? Shall we see the clouds? I say, let it rain, and let it germinate a new sibling of development that will liberate our citizens from ignorance and poverty through a cloud-based education. To the administration and faculty and students of Chulalongkorn University and the Don Morgan Marcus United State University, we say, let it rain. Let it rain. And let it rain. First, we start with a drought. I want you to uh, have your two fingers. Okay. Let's start with the drop. Drop lets it rain. Then two, it becomes a drizzle. Okay. Drizzle louder. Okay. Then three, it becomes a shower. And then four, a heavy rain. And five, a storm. Okay. So that is sitting in cloud and let it rain. Thank you very much.
infrastructure for instructional delivery and other learning innovations by Dr. Florida Houston, the Chancellor. สิ่งที่เราสําหรับเรื่องต่อไปนะคะเป็นเรื่องของประวัติการการบริหารจัดการการเรียนรู้นะคะเป็นเรื่องของโครงสร้างในการการส่งต่อนะคะเกี่ย
Thai, Cambodians, Lao, Koreans, Americans, and whoever are interested to join or enroll in the learning management system will understand each other because of this function. Now, what are the features of a learning management system? First, there is a communication module. What are these tools? We have forum, chat, email, announcements, collaboration, and conferences. We could do conferences. You are not required to go to the Philippines anymore. And we're not required to come here to see each other. But we could do conferences through the cloud, through the learning management system. Next are the learning modules. What are the learning modules? We have study materials, exercises, tests, and of course, the most important one is how could we manage our courses. We have to administer our lecture notes and our assessment of tests. Glossary is also available, or encyclopedia is available in the learning management system. Next, administration modules. So we have to manage our users. We need to track them. We need to know their statistics and personal user profile. And then the rights management. Also, the installation of the new modules. Next is the SWOT analysis. What are the strengths? Weaknesses, threats, and opportunities of a learning management system. Let's start with this trend. It's been here a long, long time. Learning management system. And it's accepted very well. What else? Provides a central and manageable system for online and offline training. Capable of integrating with the workflow. Capable of integrating with other existing systems and exhaustive MIS reporting. After my talk, Dr. Kanali will discuss the best practices of our university and how do we use our learning management system. And she will discuss the strengths of this one. Works excellent for course management, delivery, and tracking of formal learning, and capable of managing competency and talent management. How about the weaknesses? Of course we have weaknesses. And so do I. <laughs> and so is our learning management system. Focus on control and managing. At first, we have to control and we have to manage our um, databases. It's more on control and managing more than learning learner experience. Next, well, as a developing country, there are universities that are not ready for Web 2.0 experience and offers outdated way of course access. But with Chula, I doubt. I think you have everything here. Focus on former learning to be pushed to learners. No real standards govern learning management system development and overall customer experience with experience with elements is not consistent. How about the opportunities? First, to create a learner-centric environment. We are more on outcome space now rather than a um, a professor oriented uh, class. To offer talent management functionality in the context of both formal and informal learning, especially to those who are introverts. We have students who are introverts and they couldn't say whatever they want to say inside the class, but in the learning management system, you could freely talk to your professors and you could 
say to them your suggestions and opinions about any topics in your class. Threats. Well, of course, we're not going to die if we're going to use this one. <laughs> Slow to respond to changing learner needs. With the advent of technology, of course, the technology should also respond to our needs. As market fragmentation increases, there are more element systems will become out of tune to the market demands, thereby creating a higher level of dissonance with the elements. Why? Because of the social media, Facebook, they're more advanced now compared to the learning management system. Social networking tools could extend to take over some of the elements, functionality, posting, and new competition. Already are two elements. We often we use Facebook every minute, every second of the day. Well, we communicated through Facebook. I kept in touch, or I keep in touch with Dr. Jean through Facebook. I met her again after five long years, and now here we are, because of social media. I met Dr. Haiti, because of social media. We, we are talking with each other through Facebook. But not evidence yet. And we are looking forward to that. Now, I have been talking about elements, but what are the different software available now? So these are Elements service providers. We have mock list. You can see that here in this link. Canvas, edX, Coursera. It's free for some courses. And you could graduate in Harvard, in Boston, in London, <laughs> anywhere in the world. Khan Academy, the University of Central Florida, and there are more. So these are just the few service providers that I am very familiar with. And uh, at the moment, our university's faculty members are involved with these uh, um, service providers. Now what next? So this is the interface of edX. How about the software? What can we use? There are open source, so when you say open source, they are free. And you can customize them. And of course, they are commercial, and you have to pay for it. What are the open source software? We have the Moodle, AtuTor, .lrn, Docebo, Docus, Fireline, Ilias, and Sun. How about the commercial? Now in a developing country, sometimes you don't, we are not interested anymore with commercial ones because we have to pay. But of course, you get what you pay for. And if you're going to pay, then these are one of the best LMS that are available. So these are some open source LMS software. I could share with you my slide later on, so you could see or you could uh, check on the websites. And uh, this is the comparison now, the architecture of the software. What are the criteria? We have the web server, development language, the database, and the operating system. So most of the open source, their database, their development language, their database and operating system are similar. Except, oh, they, they are similar. Sakai is using Apache and Tomcat. But, of course, these are open source software also. But you can see there is, they are not uh, Mac dependent. There are more on Windows and Unix operating system. Moodle. So what's Moodle? 
It's a modular object-oriented dynamic learning environment, and it's free. It's developed by Martin de Gamas, and it was released in August 2002. Moodle is very popular, and it's easy to use. Well, what are the major advantages? It could track. You could get use their chat function, function, and it has an RSS tool. Now, what else? It can support almost 122 languages. How about shortcomings? Visiting different courses requires different account numbers than one person. And the curriculum resources are not rich. You have to supply. <laughs> you have to upload everything. Finally, mostly must be English, causing inconvenience for users in other language. How about Arabic? How about the Chinese people? No, it's difficult and time. They couldn't uh, encode it in English. A tutor, what about A tutor? It's an open source also, and it was released in 2002. What are the major advantages? It's user friendly. It could upload forms from users involved. It, got, it could also upload audio and video. And it supports 20 languages. What about the major shortcomings? It's not efficient in supporting other languages. SAPA. It's a community of academic institutions and it's also free and developed by MIT, University of Michigan, Stanford University and others. What are the major advantages? It facilitates easy exchange of information among web-based user communities. So the content is rich. It's very convenient to transplant one existing database to the new platform, easy to join and set up, and it has more tools. But the major shortcoming is, it's very complex. <laughs> the interface of system is confusing, and the installation is very hard. How about Kyrily? It's a collaborative e-learning platform, and it's free developed by UCL, IPN, and ICAM. I included the source in case you are very interested in it. I believe that this college is uh, very enthusiastic in uh, doing researches about educational technology. What are the major advantages? It's easy to create a course. It manages the achievement of students. How about major shortcomings? Well, there is no ch chat function. And the uh, tool attachment for student is there. The case is also an open source. How about the major advantage? Function of supporting video is stronger. And that we need very much. Online tests are perfect. It provides many test types. It is easy to create a learning path for teachers. So it's a pro teacher. <laughs> How about major shortcomings? Lesser food for students. And not well equipped to support all languages. Errors may appear when browse. So now let's compare. If you could see here, Moodle that's more yes. From the forum, chat, mail, announcement, collaboration, and conferences. The rest, oh, Duke is also yes. Yeah. How about uh, study materials, exercise tests, course management, and glossary? You could see. Perfect yes is Moodle and Duke. Uh, User management, rights management and installation of the new mo modules. Moodle, a tutor, Sakai. That's a perfect yes. 
Now, this is the percentage. Modal is 100%. Yes. Second two is glucose. And the rest, they're 88 and 70. As a conclusion, the present study focuses only on open source elements. It was observed that model evolved as the most adaptable elements in comparison to the other elements. Though all elements have many common features, but there are variations. Though there are lots of e-learning systems, but still there exists some problems with such systems. What are the barriers? With regards to personal barriers, our attitude towards e-learning, our acceptance. Our learning style or preferences. Now most of the professors who are 50 and above, they want face-to-face. -face. <laughs> <laughs> but most of the professors who are uh, 40 below, <laughs> they like elements. With regards to organizational barriers, lack of time for study, this needs a lot of time to study. And interpersonal barriers, because in LMS we are dealing with a diverse classroom already. But look at Nanyang Technological University. Most of their students are expats. And also, to learn more, you have so many um, students coming from abroad. Registration system problems. It's usually the problem. <laughs> How about technological barriers? Quality of e-learning platforms. So we really have to choose our software and of course limitations of technical support. Loss of data. Sometimes it's hanging, hanging out in the clouds there and when it rains <laughs> and there are storms, the data will be lost somewhere there in the cloud also. <laughs> Content suitability barrier, content bad suited to the audience, and poorly constructed assessment. How about in the instructional barriers? Lack of progress report and feedback, poor instructional design, limited reference materials, access and navigation problems, unclear or inconsistent instructions, Inability to save work, lack of learner technical skills and accessibility issues. So these are the instructional barriers. And this is the challenge to our fellow educators, our professors, and to our administrators. Now what is the future of LMS? Teachers function could not be embodied well. Is a teacher who Will the teacher still be a teacher or a facilitator? Diagnostic assessment, assessment is short. Lacks in evaluation-centric and student-centric approach. Personalized service is sufficient. So these are my references. I will share my slides later. Thank you. Um, before we proceed to the next session, I would like to ask all of you to have a short break of 10 minutes because we are running out of time. So instead of 15, we make it faster. 10 minutes, short break. Thank you.
บ้างนะคะอย่างเช่นซอฟต์แวร์ที่เป็นแก้เป็นสองค่ายค่ายที่จะเป็นค่ายที่เป็น Open s o u r c i n ฟรีใช่ไหมคะหรือเช่น Moodle ที่เราใช้ใช้อยู่อย่างของของจุฬาเราก็จะมีตัวหนึ่งที่ใช้อยู่ใครใครทราบไหมคะเราใช้อะไรคะ Blackboard Blackboard เป็นประเทศ Commercial ซึ่งเสียเงินนะคะแล้วก็เพื่อพูดเกี่ยวกับเรื่องของฟีเจอร์ต่างๆใช่ไหมคะว่าตัว l s ได้ทำอะไรได้บ้างประโยชน์ของแต่ละซอฟต์แวร์แต่ตัวมีโค้ดคอนแบบไหนนะคะมีข้อดีข้อเสียอย่างไรนะคะที่เมื่อกี้มีอาจารย์ได้จบสไลด์เดอร์ซาเมชั่นไปนะคะสำหรับต่อไปเดี๋ยวเราจะฟังท่านอาจารย์ท่านต่อไปนะคะในเรื่องของด็อกเตอร์เฟย์ไฮไลท์ทูทำให้เป็นอีกหนึ่งแพทชิสส์ในดิสเทนส์และเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่จะเป็นการเร
uh, there are gaps. So our students prefer to go somewhere else than the classroom. Okay. So um, now we are into the globalization of education. We tend to globalize. We become global citizens, as they say. Um, therefore, university, universities are expanding to serve beyond their boundaries. Now I know in Chula Lumpur, in this university, ICT is too strong. Uh, everybody has a uh, tablet, everybody has the gadgets. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, two to three each, and how many cellular phones? Five each. <laughs> So there are greater competent, uh, competitions in universities like uh, they compete for best student globally and universities want to achieve world class status just like uh, ours and yours and universities, universities want to create top tier research. Uh, we were talking with the, the administrators a while ago that in this school, this university, each teacher has to publish one research a year. And I think students are also asked to publish or to write, present their researches. That's how we become globally competitive. Okay. Um, what's the difference between yesterday's learning and today's learning? Okay. Here. So in 2005, face-to-face -face classroom setting for example that one here in 2005 it's just a conference and in 2013 there are already laptops each tablets okay phones and they're not writing anymore they just take a picture of the slides uh, that becomes a must already. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there's a face to face lecture before, that's traditional. But it says here in this paradigm, I'm uh, sorry, in this pyramid. Okay. Uh, it, it says there, students. Retain highest on teaching others or through uh, immediate use no? or teaching others. It's collaboration, meaning to say. Then uh, practice doing, discussion, demonstration, audio visuals come next. And that is through MOOC. Are you aware of MOOC or uh, any one of you who has a role in MOOC? Massive open online course. That's MOOC. And then we have e-learning and blended learning. Now lecture is just 5% retention to our students. That's why we hate teachers who lecture for 60 minutes or one and one half hours of our stay in the classroom. Okay? 5% retention only. So uh, we're talking about MOOC. Um, we had a chance to enroll in two MOOCs already because we have an English fellow in our university and also one of our faculty members in the English department uh, became a, uh, a, a scholar of the University of Oregon. And she brought with us the link uh, for Coursera and MOOC. So English teachers in uh, our university have been enrolling for Coursera and uh, we call it Shaping the Way We Teach and uh, MOOC, MOOC camps. Okay? So um, before the chalk and talk has long ruled the classroom, traditionally the teacher has all the knowledge. He presumed the that all sorts of no knowledge comes from the teacher. Mm -hmm. okay. So it's a chalk talk, 
what uh, right now we have the digital learning no? uh, we have a greater emphasis on MOOC on demand learning and network learning okay so here comes the, dis the disruptive technology what is disruptive te technology for example we have no uh, letter we're not we're not posting letters anymore. What has changed? We have emails. Okay. Not any more typewriters. No more typewriters these days. Huh? <laughs> we have the laptops. Huh? Okay. And I want to believe that there's no substitute of the teacher. The computer should not uh, be a substitute uh, of the teacher. I want to believe that the teacher is always there. Okay. okay. Uh, so a disruptive technology is one that displaces an established technology and shapes up the world. Okay. So we have uh, the blended learning. Blended learning is uh, an it's an integrate it's an integrate online with traditional face to face class activities in a planned, pedagogically valuable manner. So it's planned. Uh, in the field, in uh, our university, we have a blended learning in our PhD programs. We have the PhD science education and PhD uh, math education. We are into blended learning already. So we have uh, top short programs, we call them top short programs. And our students uh, come from uh, uh, Saudi Arabia, the United States, and they're involved in our um, programs through blended learning. Okay. So blended learning can be synchronous or asynchronous. Synchronous when you have uh, uh, the synchronous online classes are those that require students and instructors to be online at the same time. Like the MOOC, no? in our MOOC uh, class, since it is an American uh, time, we have to be awake at 11 to 12 o'clock midnight. So we have a class, and uh, there are sessions where we can um, we can comment, we can uh, give our opinions, and uh, we can also clap. We can also raise our hands. Uh, through MOOC, and we can even see the lecturers in, in that MOOC camp. And also, if it is asynchronous, we can have assignments, uh, all homework, all projects, all outputs are posted, uh, and the students can just do the work uh, anytime. And uh, there is a, 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 a date, a schedule when you are going to submit those projects. So in your own time, you can do your work. Even if your professor is not around, then you can have uh, something to do. So uh, there is a need to rethink how we teach for the teachers. No? We have to address the needs of our students since they are more into technology. So we have to be with them. Now, one professor says, my school is going through the process of adopting the common core, and there is a tremendous push to create student-driven classrooms using technology. In short, I am overwhelmed, and I fear that I am too old, too used to the way I have thought to make the change. I think uh, some of the teachers do not want to get out from their comfort zone, and they will just still make use of the methodologies and the strategies that they've been doing 30 years ago. Okay? But change is inevitable. We have to change. Okay? And uh, our, our thinking also has to change. So balance blended with flipped approach. So there's uh, the flipped class. I know you are aware of the, the flipped classroom, right? So, blended may not be sufficient, but better if it is blended with flipped. And an example of this is the MOOC. 
the move, the move, uh, the move as a chorus. Okay. So if you try move the massive open online course in all subject areas. If you want to learn, for example, uh, for the professors, you want to learn strategies in teaching, in rolling the MOOC for our students. If you want to get deeper into your content, then you enroll in MOOC. If you want to learn English, there is also a, a, a course for English, even in Coursera. Okay, so you start and end. Uh, there's a starting and end and the ending of your time. You have the we have the video lectures, assignments, and group work. There are projects, discussions, and forums, reading materials, assessments, and there is a certification. So we have we have received actually uh, <coughs> certificates from the U.S. Embassy. Um, from the University of Boston and the University of Harvard, you know, okay, through the MOOC. So, uh, MOOC is uh, growing. Okay. It is growing in popularity. So you can see the trend there. So, do you want to enroll in MOOC? It says, to MOOC or not to MOOC? Um, yeah, how to MOOC? Better is more relevant. That's a, a more relevant question. Moves are very demanding compared to traditional courses content development. Okay. So as I said, move is a course, and most move courses don't have face-to-face -face elements. That is uh, one good thing. No? Sometimes uh, our professor um, is a threat to us. Even if we have a lot of ideas there, but we are afraid to raise our hands. But through MOOC, you are able to express yourself very freely because you can see uh, the professor there. Okay. Blended learning is an approach to teaching and learning, and you can use MOOC content within a face-to-face -face environment. Students can go through a MOOC course and attend a face-to-face -face classroom sessions for discussions or class activities. So let's go to different uh, practices, the best practices of blended learning. Blended course design requires a willingness to step back and consider the goals and range of possibilities, strategies, techniques, and tools. Okay. Uh, so there's a balance between online and face-to-face. -to -face. So you need to find an equilibrium between online and face-to-face. -to -face. What are uh, the courses that have to be face-to-face -face and what courses are to be with blended learning. Like in our uh, PhD programs or in our MA and PhD programs, we have identified 12 to 15 units for face-to-face -face only. The rest would be blended learning. So like uh, there are courses that have laboratories, then it has to be face-to-face. And the rest will be blended. Okay. Um, online learning can be put great pressure on teachers through it can drain on one's time and effort. It can have a negative impact. Ne negative impact in the sense that if teachers would not embrace this kind of platform, then it would be difficult. And then um, so there should be a proper balance to have a positive impact. Okay, number two, best practice is on learning outcome. So blended learning focuses on learning outcome and not the technology. Okay. Uh, learning objectives must be must take precedence in the design. Uh, are the learning outcomes specific, attainable, and measurable? And all activities must focus on the learning outcomes. Since we are now, as I said, uh, into the outcomes-based instruction. So we are more into uh, the outcome or the project, the output of our students. Okay. So which delivery mode is best? It says there, there is a need to balance online delivery with face-to-face -face delivery. Is it 50%, 50% uh, 
uh, face to face and we could present blended for 3070 or 8020. Then uh, you have to think of the topics, learning strategies, science and technology. Um, so it, it, is it a blend of social learning with a formal teaching? So uh, is it 20 percent and 20 to 10, a 20 to 10 uh, ratio? And then, uh, of course, it will promote informal learning. It will promote informal learning in the sense that you will not be the focus of uh, attention in the classroom when you are in you and you are called. Okay. Rather, it will be collaborative in nature. All of you will be sharing ideas through the net. The teacher of uh, the blended learning should be a researcher and developer. That's number one. Should be an integrator and it should be he should be a guide. Okay. So I think this is for the teachers. The class size class size can uh, has an impact on online teaching domain. Class size will determine the type of activities, assignments, evaluations, and feedback that will be used. In our group, uh, it, since it's an open uh, uh, registration, all over the world you will find you will you can chat with different nationalities, different cultures. It's really massive. It's massive. But in your classroom, maybe. Uh, 20 to 30 students would be ideal. Okay, what about on uh, student IT skills? Not all students have good IT skills, but I'm facing the good ones here. Teachers will need to recognize their needs, challenges, and opportunities. Then there should be support, help desk, user manuals, and others. Uh, new students may need more support in monitoring. The advanced or veteran on the students may require less one on one attention. This could be what we call peer tutoring. Okay, uh, the seventh best practice here in uh, blended learning is balancing content development time. Online course preparations can be very time intensive, requiring considerable research, creativity, and planning. Also, more readings when you have a lot of things in order to answer the question later on. Okay? Not necessary online mode, save on teaching time. Teaching online can actually provide teachers with more flexibility. You can, you can have your own space, they say, in blended learning. Then, uh, feedback, uh, feedback or uh, assessment. Grading papers or assignments on, uh, in online class discussion or feedback can take up most of teachers' time. So the teachers, they need. Uh, you need to be always online and look to, uh, at the outputs of your students. Technology can help to leverage efficiency in grading and content delivery, but it can be time intensive to implement. And lastly, it is a balanced strategy for grading is necessary. Okay. Number nine, time for professional development. Professional development opportunity to attend conferences, workshops, participate in learning communities, learn new e-learning techniques, and keep abreast of discipline-specific research and pedagogy. These are uh, for the teachers. Professional development is often less of a priority given the other demands in the teaching domain, right? For the teachers, then you know, we have to read a lot, read uh, a lot of uh, work of our students, great papers, and therefore um, forgetting sometimes our special development. And lastly, the student engagement. Student engagement is key to this blended learning. You get students' attention you know, because they're facing the computer and therefore you get students' attention. They have a lot of ideas. You know, I don't believe that the most silent in the classroom has nothing to say. 
he asked a lot to say. But through this blended learning, his ideas will be poured out. He will uh, write all what he has in mind because maybe this person is very shy, but through the net, he can express himself very, very clearly. Okay, his social presence and belongingness, you will meet a lot of uh, people through the net. It has clear content structure, clear instructions, uh, challenging activities. I still remember with Dr. Emmanuel Sopuan, uh, we were rushing all uh, the, the, the submission of the work until uh, early morning. We're still working on the lesson plans that we're going to submit. Uh, we have family feedback, they will always tell us. Uh, you miss one, you can you can take again until you perfect the, the, the assessment given. And then it has a personal touch because you can chat, you can email, you can have conferencing with other uh, students who are involved in this plan. <coughs> okay, so will this really work? Will uh, that well learning really work? There is already a research conducted that uh, found it is very, very effective. Okay. So why do we go into blended learning? It says there it's best for both worlds, your world and our world, both students and teachers. It has it is learner engagement. Okay. Uh, it has deeper learning because uh, each student will see himself to be successing in his uh, in his uh, studies because he can do it by himself. It has extended learning. You can do it anywhere. You can do it at home. You can uh, if you you go abroad, you can bring uh, the the work abroad. You can feel your achievements because they will always give you feedback. Then uh, it's creative, it, it is collaborative, and it is flexible and motivating. So we learn to make eye contact. Teachers learn to make eye contact, to become aware of other person's posture and tone, to comfort one another, and respectfully challenge one another. And that empathy and intimacy flourish through face to face. We learn who we are. But technology has the power to engage students and make learning more fun. So much of learning happens outside of the classroom. Through we need to connect our in-school activities with our students' out-of-school interests. Maybe they, they develop a lot of writing poetry, producing music, videos, or solving hard problems, and in the in their communities. And this we can do through blended learning. Okay, I hope I have uh, encouraged you and motivated you to enroll on online learning, and maybe we can have online learning together. Thank you.
ียนในชาติเรียนนะคะแล้วก็บวกกับการใช้ออนไลน์เรียนนี้ต่างๆนะคะซึ่งอาจจะเป็นเรื่องของการเรียนแบบภาษาเวลาใช่ไหมภาษาเวลาเราก็เรียนพร้อมอาจารย์ใช่ไหมเปิดหน้าจอมีการสตรีมมิ่งมีการคุยกันมีเทเลคอนเฟอเรนซ์คุยกันนะคะแต่ว่าก็จะมีอีกอันนึงซึ่งเป็นเรื่องของการอาซิงคนะซึ่งเป็นการเรียนภาษาเวลาต่างๆนะคะทีนี้ครูเนี่ยหลายๆท่านก็อาจจะอยู่ในเอชที่อาจจะไม่ยอมรับกับเทคโนโลยีพวกนี้ใช่ไหมคะแต่ตอนนี้เนี่ยเราอยู่ในการเรียนสอนแบบ t w e s t century เนี่ยเราก็บิดเทียนการเปลี่ยนแปลงไม่ได้แล้วนะคะแล้วก็เกี่ยวกับอาจารย์ก็จะพูดเกี่ยวกับเรื่องของ best practice ต่างๆนะคะเคสที่เกี่ยวกับเป็น e t learning ออกมาเนี่ยเป็น e t learning เนี่ยเขาเน้นอยู่กับเรื่องของผลลัพธ์ต่างๆนะคะและจำเป็นที่ต้องมีเกี่ยวกับเรื่องของ objective แล้วสิ่งต่างๆที่เรียนไปเนี่ยต้องสามารถวัดผลได้นะคะมีการวัดที่แน่นอนและชัดเจนนะคะซึ่งเกี่ยวกับเรื่องของตัวอาจารย์ที่เป็นผู้สอนเนี่ยโรบทบาทก็จะเปลี่ยนไปนะคะก็จะเปลี่ยนจากที่เราเคยเป็นทีเชอร์เซนทริกใช่ไหมอะไรเราจะเรื่องของอาจารย์ตอนนี้เราจะกลายเป็นผู้อินทิเกรตเป็นผู้นำสิ่งทุกอย่างเข้ามารวมกันนะคะแล้วก็เป็นเรื่องของการสร้างรีเสิร์ชใช่ไหมคะค้นคว้าหาอะไรอะไรมาใส่ให้คอนเทนต์ให้กับผู้เรียนต่อไปนะคะแล้วก็ตัวคลาสไซส์เองนะคะสำหรับเรื่องของเบสไซส์เรื่องของจำนวนผู้เรียนต้องมีผลด้วยนะคะแล้วก็ส่วนเรื่องของอาจารย์เนี่ยก็จะต้องใช้เวลามากเลยนี่ก็เป็นข้อจำกัดที่หนึ่งว่าอาจารย์สมัยนี้ไม่ใช่ว่าการสอนประเภทเรียนเด็กเรียนแล้วอาจารย์จะสบายนะคะอาจารย์จะต้องคอยเตรียมคอนเทนต์ตลอดเวลานะคะเพราะฉะนั้นต้องคอยออนไลน์ตลอดเวลาด้วยนะคะแล้วก็อีกเรื่องนึงที่เกี่ยวกับเรื่องของ students engagement ก็คือการติดอยู่กับการการกำหนดเรียนเนี่ยนะคะก็จะมีทําให้เกิดการเรียนแบบเป็นเป็นเด็กออนไลน์เนี่ยจะทําให้มีการจูงใจนะคะแล้วก็นิสิตเองเนี่ยก็จะมีไอเดียต่างๆที่อยู่ในในหัวเขาสามารถที่จะแชร์ออกมาได้นะคะกล้าพูดนะคะมันเหมาะสำหรับคนที่ใช่ไหมไม่ค่อยกล้าพูดเวลาเราอยู่ในชั้นเรียนเท่าไหร่เนี่ยก็จะเหมาะกับการที่จะเรียนเด็กและทำเป็นเด็กเพราะว่าเราสามารถที่จะสื่อสารกับอาจารย์โดยตรงได้นะคะแล้วก็ในเรื่องของเป็นเด็กทุกสิ่งทุกอย่างจะต้องทําให้เคลียร์ใช่ไหมคะวิธีการสอนเอ่ออัพเดตต่างๆการเอ่ออินสตาแกรมโครงสร้างต่างๆต้องเคลียร์คอนเทนต์ต่างๆจะต้องเคลียร์ต้องชัดเจนนะคะและจะต้องมีตัวกิจกรรมต่างๆที่มีความท้าทายให้กับให้เกิดการติดยึดในบทเรียนนั้นๆด้วยนะคะแล้วก็เรื่องของ personal t a s k ต่างๆก็มีไม่ใช่ว่าการเรียนแบบเป็นเด็กแล้วมันจะไม่มีเพราะว่าเรามีแชทมีออนไลน์เราสามารถเรียนติดต่อไปได้นะคะแล้วก็มีเรื่องของการทำ research นะคะออกมาเนี่ยก็ต้องบอกไปว่าตัวนี้เนี่ยมีมีผลนะคะในการที่จะสร้างผลสำเร็จในการเรียนรู้ที่ดีนะคะก็มีเรื่องของ human touch นะคะแล้วก็เรื่องของเทคนิคเนี่ยก็ถือว่าทำให้การเป็นเด็กเนี่ยมันรวมสองสิ่งใช่ไหมคะเรื่องของ face to face เราได้เห็นเนเราได้สัมผัสระหว่างนิสิตกับอาจารย์ในห้องใช่ไหมคะส่วนเทคโนโลยีช่วยเราให้เกิดการเรียนรู้ที่มีความสนุกสนานภาคไทยขึ้นและสามารถทำให้เราเนี่ยเรียนได้จากช่องที่และทุกเวลาตามเพสของเราเองด้วยนะคะเป็นประมาณนี้ค่ะงั้นเรามาต่อไปที่ next session นะคะ The next session will be emerging roles of teachers and learners in the cloud-based learning by Dr. Emmanuel Songkorn. เป็นเรื่องของการโรบทบาทของอาจารย์และผู้เรียนนะคะใน cloud-based learning นะคะ
Now, uh, this is just a follow-up of actually what was already discussed with Dr. Fleck. So I wouldn't uh, be dwelling on it uh, too many because uh, some were already uh, explained by Dr. Fleck and uh, Dr. Pisa. Now, uh, the thing now is the technology is already with us. No? It's already with us. And our learners have already changed. What used to be good uh, strategies, pedagogical tools in the past, seem to be not working at present already. You know? So uh, there have been partnerships, but education is quite a bit uh, slow in responding to the challenges posed by changing nature of learners. Like Dr. Pes said a while ago, uh, she asked you whether you would still uh, like to face or go to your classrooms. And then if you raise your hands a while back, no, saying, you'd rather not, but you'd rather stay uh, in front of your computers or in your respective homes, no, doing your thing. So this is already the, you know, the uh, behavior and, and the changing uh, patterns of learning that our students would want to engage in. And here we are, uh, 20th century teachers who still try to impose our ways of the past, which are no longer working. So, uh, this was already explained by Dr. Pisa Wildman. Let me proceed on yeah. uh, the teaching and learning for a 21st century world. Uh, okay, this was Played by Dr. Pe already. Okay, just on uh, the, the, the main drivers of e learning in higher education, where it's not. Okay, the main drivers of e learning in higher education, as I've said, we already have the technology. No? It's just a matter of using this technology. And after all, these are free, like many are free technology that, that we can use of. And uh, many learners would like to learn it anywhere, anytime. Now, uh, Dr. Fes shared you some of our practices in, in the Philippines where uh, we were really forced to go into this because some of the students are not migrated. But they would still want to access uh, some, some form of uh, education. Hence, uh, we really work on this out. But as she also uh, explained, that before we could launch into this, before we could uh, do this uh, on uh, you know, an acceptable scale, we have to experience it ourselves. That's why we have learned, uh, we have enrolled in uh, MOOC classes, and really, we're able to experience, you no? Know? And we have seen the advantage of this. Like, you know, there are some uh, students of us who are working and cannot really come to, to the university. Some are working on, uh, they will work in a very far place, and it's just impossible for them to really come, you know, to the university. That's why uh, through the program, you know, the cloud-based program, through blended technology and cloud, uh, blended learning, we are giving education on at their footsteps, no? in the doorsteps, rather. Like, uh, as we were discussing with uh, Dr. Uh, Aitip uh, a while back, uh, we have students here in Thailand, actually, who would like to enroll on this blended program. That's why uh, we're trying to collaborate on, on this aspect, on to, to what extent could really come up with a joint program by both universities for many of our migrant workers. Yeah, because, you know, Filipinas are very well dispersed uh, in the entire world. And uh, sometimes the problem is it's too expensive uh, getting education from, you know, many universities. No? It's beyond the reach of many students. It only favors those who are economically advantaged. But what about the very good ones who are financially challenged? So, a blended learning is one form of, you know, democratizing education, making the playing field leveled. No? So, you could access good education, you could have a degree, that would become your passport for, you know, 
uh, can be more opportunities in life with advanced education with you. So, changing school practices, changing learner practices, and expectations of 21st century learners. Even in the workplace now, uh, what is highly encouraged is using the technology. But as uh, we have been saying, uh, we have not really mined to the maximum the power of technology. So you have social software, as you said earlier, Facebook is very familiar you know, to everyone. And mobile learning, and open educational resources like the book, cloud computing, and learning uh, analytics. So this was already explained by uh, Dr. Peng, so I move on to other parts. So yeah, uh, our students are highly mobile and they would want to learn anywhere. You know, the thought of you are in a beach, for example, and yet you are still learning. So it's enjoying the beach at the same time, not missing you know, what uh, possibilities that we could learn uh, somewhere else offered by university. So we have crossed you know, uh, a point where we could really make education accessible in the cloud, right? So you simply download it, no, or simply uh, go to the site and you have there. Yeah, personalized learning, learning on your own, where you want it, when you want it, especially for students who already are working. And sometimes the problem is really bringing yourself in a school, not to a school, but sometimes work doesn't just allow you. So, the university must uh, reach you through the cloud-based environment. And uh, many learners' expectation of new emerging practices in education. That's why uh, in the future, universities are working. So today's students, generally speaking, Take for granted and get on with doing all the available technologies allow talking, messaging, playing online games, sharing images, finding things out, and open simultaneously. But when, when you are you know in your computer, you do this simultaneously, you're playing, you're learning, so uh, you know it is a fun way of, of learning. I like in the classroom when your teachers say playing, usually you know <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you, you get okay. You get the the rack of the picture okay before you, but here not anymore. So, however, there is still an emerging gap no, between our practices and what is already emerging in the field. So this is here where we should start uh, really working hard. Like who among you here are graduate students? Who are graduate students here? Grad students, graduate. Students. And so what role are we playing in terms of you know uh, bridging the gap between things of the past and the emerging you know future of learning? So the projects and the researches that we should be doing should uh, you know more or less uh, move to this direction. And especially that you know uh, yeah, technology is with us, the younger ones and the old ones, but you are at the middle, you could provide a very good bridge, okay, between things of the past and emerging trends in the future. And this is a very good thing where, you know, the graduate students uh, can work on. So what are some recommendations? Well, as uh, for learners, Dr. Pesset, we have to provide support for new digital literacies and uh, shifting focus on content to activities for academic staff, also teaching them, immersing them in the technology, and encouraging uh, a network uh, community. For institutions, stronger policies that reflect changing context of education, resources and support, strong leadership, revisioning for structures and infrastructures, 
professional development incentives for academics who would go into this. And nationally, of course, free uh, resources, no? where you know the net and all this are accessible. And promoting and sharing case studies, appropriate strategic policies and funding, network communities, and uh, scanning what else are available for technology. Yeah. Let me move on to the last one. Okay, but as far as doing this is concerned, it's not simply delivering it online and that's it. We also have to take care of the quality of uh, what we offer. Like, there are still some standards and things to do. Like, uh, Dr. Fess said a while ago, the role of the teacher is still there. Now, we don't completely substitute the teacher with a computer. Because computer-based learning without, you know, a teacher will not work, will simply not work. Even in the MOOC sessions that we have, uh, there is a high dropout rate for, you know, sessions which are not facilitated. But where the sessions are facilitated, usually it becomes, you know, it's a success story, no? Because there we share, especially in those times, in those times when it's too difficult to do the things required of us, we would really be, you know, networking and sharing and helping one another. So, other than that, you know, it's not that it becomes too impersonal, no? or we're too detached with one another, but it is one moment where we can actually, you know, make our connection stronger, one stronger, because we help one another. We want everyone to become successful in, in uh, finishing the course. And it's very important also that we have to know the purpose of our students for taking the book. Like for professionals, what are their purposes and we better fit you know, this uh, kind of courses to what is really needed by our students. Now, I don't know if you are familiar with Dr. Sugata Mitra. Have you heard of him? And he is an Indian national and is doing a lot of uh, researches in uh, what he calls the hole in the wall project. Now, you know, India is, you know, in many uh, areas of India, it's very poor. And education is not accessible. Now, in this experiment that he has conducted for almost 30 years, it was a very simple experiment, no? which, uh, in, where, as you can see in the picture, yeah, there is a hole in the wall. And in that hole is the computer. Uh, yeah, a computer with, with some lessons in it. Now the students uh, do not speak English, although the uh, delivering uh, or the medium instruction is there is English. But it's very surprising, according to him, that despite their not knowing uh, English, they were able to you know learn from. Uh, what is presented in the hole in the wall. They simply just browse what's in it. And uh, even after some time that, you know, he left them there in that village, when he came back, some students already speaking in English. And so that whole, that computer has become a teacher to these students. But uh, one thing that he observed is that there is a very good role that a teacher would play. Not the kind of teacher who would teach them. It's just a facilitator of learning. And in that facilitator of learning, the teacher need not even have to talk. And while the students are doing their thing, uh, the, the teacher would simply be staying at the back and say, go on, well that's good, that's great. No? Things like this, you know, uh, help these students. And in another experiment that he is actually doing now, he, he uh, has made you for the listed uh, grandmothers, nannies, and who would do you know the support to these students. The grandmother may not know what is in the computer, but he's simply there, you know, telling them, "Oh, what's that? Right? Isn't that great? Is that surprising?" And then, you know, uh, the students all the more get motivated in their tasks. And a very simple experiment here is doing a lot of things to students and 
you know, this is one way of bringing education to our students who cannot access education. And, and this is one promise that, you know, a cloud-based learning uh, gives to us in a very fast and very economical way. Continent, uh, just, just, you know, a small investment that we have to make, make for the infrastructure. All you need is, you know, the broadband, collaboration, and encouragement and motivation from a teacher. Okay, so our final thoughts. So our challenge now is, what would be the role of universities in the cloud environment? You know, we in the university should set the pace in bringing out, in making this a reality to our students, especially in uh, countries like ours, you know, developing where still a considerable portion of our population cannot access education. So this is our take. This is our contribution in terms of making our citizens knowledgeable and become productive in life. And when we make our students productive, no, they can stand on their own, then they will bring you know, great opportunities for our country, to which they will make our country stronger. Thank you very much. ก็เป็นเรื่องเกี่ยวกับบทบาทของอาจารย์กับนิสิตใช่ไหมคะในยุคที่มีของเขาเปลี่ยนสมัยนะคะแล้วก็จะบอกว่าเอ่อเทคโ
ถึง12นาฬิกา30นะคะอาทิตย์ที่สองของปีนี้ที่เราจะมีการจัดงานกันในปีนี้ที่เราจะมีการจัดงานกันในปีนี้ที่เราจะมีการจัดงานกันในปีนี้ที่เราจะมีการจัด
their gifts is also fully or actively working. Uh, we mentioned in this paper that uh, the Philippines has a competitive advantage of using the English language because of an existing uh, comprehensive transnational education strategy with, which is being uh, implemented by the Commission on Higher Education and also quality assurance through program and institutional accreditation by the accrediting agency of chartered colleges and universities of the Philippines and the Commission of Higher Education. On international collaboration, we have um, academic collaboration with Chonburi Business Administration, Technological College, uh, graduate programs, English language, uh, fellow as faculty we have with us a U.S. Uh, national who is with the U.S. Embassy. We also have North Star Developer Village in South Korea on information technology and conduct of entrance exam through UPT and technical training of six technical staff. We have also a student exchange program with South Korea, the Omega International College in Singapore, and we have an ongoing um, um, collaboration with Vietnam, an opening of academic programs, particularly on e-learning. Now these are just uh, documentations of what uh, these collaborations have presently been undertaking, particularly because they come from the agriculture program at the Institute of Agriculture. We have a present a collaboration with student practic on student practicum with agro studies in Israel. And presently we have 85 students there. During the previous years, we have had uh, more than 100 uh, since it started, since the program started with, uh, or the collaboration started with the Agro Studies Center in Israel. And uh, this is just uh, uh, a documentation of that activity. And uh, the ambassador, Eli, of Israel together with his wife visited the institute and this was uh, photo taken with the faculty and the staff and with our OGP students. In Thailand also, we uh, have a technical training for 14 students and uh, actually in 2014 we were in uh, Sarabri farm, an organic uh, farm that produces, of course, uh, this healthy healthy uh, food in that farm and we had a great time there. In that picture we have actually our president because it was an international that we went from. collaboration uh, with Chonburi Business Administration Technical College with graduate, pro, graduate uh, students, graduate students. Also in India, we have International Sericulture Commission. Um, this was participated in by administrators and technical experts. Yeah, it, uh, this one is with our institute. Um, the Korean International Cooperation Agency, of which uh, we have uh, had three projects that we have uh, undertaken with them. This is one of this. Uh, they, uh, the volunteers have contribu contributed much to uh, having uh, established uh, a greenhouse at the Institute of uh, Agriculture, and we have a study of protected cultivation and organic farming of high value crops. And we uh, studied about mitigation and adaptation measures to climate change. 
We also have um, active collaboration with the U.S. Embassy, as I mentioned earlier, with uh, USA on research, stride uh, science, technology, research and innovation for development. And uh, we had a 4.2 million grant for PM processing with New Zealand on technical training providers with 86 trainees with Bangladesh technical training providers of the global consulting group we have had four trainings with 29 trainees uh, earlier on we had uh, this, this activity um, collaboration with Canada on development projects the Canadian um, Executive Service Office and we have trainings for nine technical staff and a study tour for 12 administrators. Also with South Korea on waste treatment. Uh, there is also, we also have the student exchange with uh, South Korea at Tamu National University. Another academic collaboration with uh, North Star Developers Village on information technology conduct of uh, entrance exam in Singapore, Omega International College, and uh, just recently we have uh, a collaboration with Topica, uh, particularly offering of academic programs through e-learning. Thank you very much, Kapunka. Imagine if you can. 
and we have our two pioneer programs, Bachelor of Arts in English Language and Bachelor of Arts in Filipino Language. In the college, we are humbled by the awards that we received. Last uh, 2014, we were recognized as first runner, best academic unit, first runner up. And uh, last year, we garnered the best academic unit award. We also have uh, a roster of faculty members who were awarded faculty of the year who have made surplus contributions particularly in instruction in realizing the university's vision and mission. Okay, uh, as a university that is principally guided by a threefold mandate, we are expected to deliver quality instruction, research, and extension. And uh, instruction among these three, instruction is the most uh, focused uh, component in our workforce. Okay, here are some of the standard practices that we do in the first uh, component, which is instruction. First, we make sure that we are uh, compliant to program standards. In the Philippines, we have this key leader that uh, sets policies, standards, and guidelines in higher learning, which is the CHED. So uh, uh, every program has to uh, ensure that uh, in all areas of its uh, of its program, uh, everything has to be complied with. This is evidenced by the issuance of certificate of program compliance. And uh, I'm happy to tell you that all the five programs that we have in the college are have complied with the sets of policies, standards, and guidelines by CHEC. Okay, uh, another thing that we do is the continuous upgrading of qualifications supported by our faculty development program. A bulk of our workforce has already their master's degree and are now working towards their doctoral degree programs. Okay, uh, another uh, thing that we do, of course, is the use of appropriate learning resources in which some of the faculty members also produce their manuals, laboratory uh, resources, laboratory resources. And another thing that we do in terms of instruction is the professional exposure of students through the on-the-job trainings in different agencies and institutions in the region. Uh, as you can see in, on this slide, we have students uh, focused in action during their OGTs. Okay, uh, we also support our students through scholarships. So in our college, we have, uh, the university has awarded 122 scholarships among the almost 1,000 students that we have in the college. And we also render services which supports non-academic needs of students. And of course, a very important parcel of instruction is strengthening uh, the quality assurance. Our programs, BS Math, BS Biology, and BS uh, Psychology are accredited level three uh, status with uh, the external accrediting body and uh, we are working towards the accreditation to the perhaps the highest level, which is level four, come 2018. And the two pioneer programs that we have are uh, next can be cycle because these are just new programs. The BS, uh, no, AB English language and AB Filipino language. Okay, so here are some of the materials that our faculty produce laboratory manuals, work text, and modules. Now, in terms of research, okay, uh, 
several uh, recognitions have been awarded to our faculty members who have presented their research outputs in the different forum. Okay, uh, here are some of our research agenda, particularly for BS Biology. We have studies on pharmacology, environmental, natural products, and biotechnology. And for the BS Mathematics, their research interests are focused on number theory, ethnomathematics, uh, geometry, and graph theory. These are both for faculty and student researchers. And for the BS Psychology program, we have assessment and evaluation studies, and also psychosocial studies. For the AB English and AB Filipino, their research uh, topics are on grammar, proficiency, language learning, writing assessment, communication, and literature. Okay, here are some of the highlights that we have in research. Okay. Here. okay, so the third mandate that uh, our, univer uh, our university is engaged in is, is on the delivery of extension work for community in partnership with uh, agencies and institutions who share the same goals as we have. Okay, so uh, for international linkages, our college had this research presentation and MOA signing last year in November 23 to Damarong Ratsunku School in Shanghai. Okay. And then we also had same uh, research presentation and uh, MOU signing with the Shanghai Rajabat University. Okay. Also in November 24 last year. And also to Rajabat Mahasarakam University, yes, also in November last year. Okay, so the scope of collaboration with these three Thai schools and universities includes research presentation and collaborations, publication of research papers, and educational materials. Another scope is the participation in and co-hosting of lectures, meetings, seminars, trainings, symposia, and conferences. Uh, just this April, uh, we had the first series of the trainings among trainings of 12 Thai, Damarong, uh, 12 Thai teachers from Damarong Ratsumpu School. Okay, uh, we have this program in Taidel, so, so was be to hello. <laughs> English at work in Asia, that, that uh, ran from April 18 to May 6. This three-week training program included uh, a basic English lectures uh, for the enhancement of macro skills that includes reading, writing, speaking, and listening. And we also had lesson planning and demonstration uh, teaching to give to uh, students. We also had research collaboration. Okay, and the other scope of collaboration is collaboration in other areas of foster research and educational cooperation. And one of the targets under this scope is the semester-long exchange program between CRRU, Shanghai Rajabat University, and Dinsu to start this academic year first semester. So 20 students will be coming from CRRU third year uh, who will be enrolled in 18 units in English subjects this August. Okay, so in local context, we also have several tie-ups with government government agencies and institutions delivering lectures among employees. And also part of our civil, civil society engagement is uh, giving lectures, uh, trainings to teachers and students of elementary and uh, high school okay, in our uh, area. Mm -hmm. 
And also for the BS Psychology group, we have uh, the hope for the girls where they, where they conduct psychological test testing and give lectures to uh, these uh, young girls. Okay, other local extension sites where we conduct our community work are seen on this slide. Okay, and okay, as I end this presentation, the common ground that make that makes us uh, perform as one of the best institutions in the country, as recognized by Chad, is our embodiment of the university mantra embracing world-class standards. We live in an institution that regards much or give much importance on delivering of quality instruction, fostering international linkages, and improving the lives of every Filipino student. I would like to take this opportunity to address and 
sincere thanks to the Congress Chairman, Associate Professor Dr. David Thank <laughs> you. 